Good morning, everyone. We praise the Lord for this beautiful day that He's given us here in South Carolina and for all the good things He is doing in our lives and hopefully in yours as well. Uh, this morning, I'd like to share just a brief message with you, just a little snippet from 2 Kings chapter 5. Uh, in 2 Kings chapter 5, a couple of verses. <clears throat> Now Nehemiah, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrian had gone out by companies and had brought away captives out of the land of Israel a little maid. And she waited on Naaman's wife, and she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. Uh, there are three principal characters in this fifth chapter of Second Kings that I'd like to take a few minutes and speak with you about. It is Naaman, the captain of the host, of the king of Syria, the little girl, and the prophet in Samaria. Now, we are told that Naaman was a man, a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. He was like many of us. We are able to excel in many notable things, but we are not without our flaws or shortcomings. He was a leper, and in spite of the fact that he was a leper, he was used by the Lord. Uh, Naaman's leprosy was noticed by the little girl, and she said out of a heart of compassion, Would God my Lord were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he will recover him of his leprosy. She wished him well and uh, spoke helpful words uh, at the right time to the right person, Naaman's wife. She relayed the message and off to Samaria, Naaman goes for his healing. The little girl in this text is like so many little girls we know. She was kind, loving, and compassionate. She gave, work, she gave information that would eventually bring healing to Naaman. In her words, is a message for us today. I believe uh, she spoke well of the prophet she knew in Samaria, and she promoted his work. I think that is notable for all of us that this little girl remembered that there was a prophet of God in Samaria, her home, and that uh, he, she was willing to promote his work because she believed he was a man of God. Now in this day, when good ministers are becoming scarce and hard to find, I think we would do well uh, to ourselves and to the church by taking more time, precious times, to appreciate our ministers when they are doing a good job. Uh, let him know you appreciate it. When he is discouraged, stand by him with words of encouragement and pray for him daily. Help him to enjoy some of the good things in life as you do. The little girl's word can be so beneficial if practiced in the church because there may be some young men trying to decide what to do with their lives. They think God may be calling them into the ministry and uh, they are watching their minister and they are watching the way their minister is being treated and uh, you know they're just kind of vacillating between two opinions. But if they see that you love your minister, appreciate his work, speak well of him, 
it just might encourage some more of our young people to take on the role of ministers. Because uh, as I speak, uh, the pa some of the pastors of the next generation may be standing right in our midst today, listening, watching, and observing. So I would encourage you to take a cue from the little girl and be an encouragement to your ministry. May the Lord bless you real good. And uh, don't forget, voting season is, is, uh, is in progress. Uh, you can vote by mail, absentee ballot, or be sure to go down to the poll on election day. Uh, many of us have already cast our ballots. Uh, I may listen to the uh, debates, uh, the advertisement, and the many other things that are going on during the election season, but my vote is already cast and I feel like I'm a part of the democratic process and I pray that you will be too. Amen.